when you've talked to Purdy, Brock Purdy, um, what, what have you gleaned? What can you tell me about how this kid is pulling off and doing what he's doing, Greg? Yeah, I mean, every time we we get off our call with him, we've mm-hmm. had him now. We had we had his debut, and they you know beat beat the Bucks. They were up you know, thirty five twenty eight nothing at half, and we're sitting there at halftime saying, "Who is this kid That's right. out here throwing three touchdowns? Like, what's going on here?" All week we've been you know preparing for this to be the Christian McCaffrey show and protect the quarterback, and then there we were in his starting uh, rookie debut, and he's he's up you know 28 nothing at halftime against Brady and the Bucks. It was it was wild to see him there and just now to see him all these months later and just the growth that he's had just as a player but from the first time we got off the call with him all the way up through last week's divisional round game every time we get off we say the same things to each other we say it's hard to believe he's a rookie. It's hard to believe he's now played seven games in the NFL like he has a really interesting demeanor, and, and, and what I mean by it is he's very confident. He's very calm. He seems like a guy who's kind of like, yeah, been there, done that, been through the fire, come out the other side. And here we are. We're like, you know, you're getting ready to go play the Dallas Cowboys in a divisional round game, and the stakes just keep getting bigger and bigger, and you would never know it. And I think that's the biggest thing that when you talk to – Kyle Shanahan and, and, you know, the guys are on the team with McCaffrey and Kittle and Trent Williams, they all say the same thing. They're like this kid from the moment he got here, even though he was a, the last pick of the draft, we all know his story. They're like, he had a personality and an approach, even in training camp throughout the whole off season that just caused us to kind of look at ourselves and go, you know, did we just, did we just kind of find a diamond in the rough? They're like, it was from day one. Um, it, what caught everyone's attention was just his approach, his demeanor, his confidence. And now he's just growing as a passer and growing as a quarterback in this league. But um, it's evident the moment you talk to him. So what did the Cowboys do that you think the Eagles can also affect to make Purdy look um, as green as we think he could, right? And, and I think we, we, we saw – Purdy struggle without the turnovers. Dak was the one who did that. But what do you think the Eagles can affect that the Cowboys put on film to to knock the Niners out and make Purdy maybe even turn it over? What do you got for me there, Greg? Yeah, I think there's a lot of similarities. I think as we were preparing last week, you know, as we were preparing for this San Francisco offense and what they were going to face with Dallas's defense, I think, you know, we – we said it at the top of the broadcast, you know, that was the best defense that the 49ers had faced since Purdy took over. Mm-hmm. So that was by far the most talent. That was by far the best pass rush and speed. And, and I think the speed element is where Dallas and Philadelphia defensively are pretty similar. You know, they, they, they don't just have one or two guys up front who can rush the passer and get after you. They got four or five. They got guys at the second level and in the secondary who can support the run from depth play with speed, play on fire. So in that regard, I think there's a lot of similarities, you know, schematically and the way they build their fronts and coverages, you know, the way Jonathan Gannon with the Eagles versus Dan Quinn with Dallas, obviously it's a little bit different, but I think that the thing that Purdy and this offense of San Francisco is going to face is there's going to be speed at all three levels. You think there's space there all of a sudden that space gets eaten up really quickly. You know, whether it's Hassan Reddick coming off the coming off the edge or Gardner Johnson coming from like that safety nickel kind of hybrid spot that he's been playing now. So it's a it's a talented group. And I would say the same thing we did last week. This is probably the best defense Brock Purdy has faced now again. And that's the way the playoffs work. Each week the stakes get a little higher. Each week the competition just takes up a little bit of a you know a notch up and um it's a great challenge, but, you know, listen, they got Kyle Shanahan. He has unbelievable weapons around him. He has a very good offensive line. The, the, San Francisco doesn't take a backseat in talent or scheme to anybody, and I think that's what makes this matchup so interesting is regardless of who's got the ball, regardless of the situation, there are stars, there are there is talent, there is coaching on all aspects of this game, and uh, that's the way it should be. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku Channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 